Welcome to a new episode of Video Car Review, our international branch of Ausfahrt TV. Yeah, welcome. I'm your host, Mr. Z. My English is kind of kinky, so I excuse myself always uh, in the first place. If you're new to uh, Video Car Review, our format, then be aware our reviews are always a little bit longer than everything else you know from television or YouTube. Um, but don't worry, because in the description text you find jump markers. Our videos are always structured in the very same way, always the same chapters. And so this way you can compare different cars to each other very easily. But on the other hand, um, you can uh, jump from section to section or from chapter to chapter. So if uh, you don't care about the trunk, you can just jump uh, to the driving impressions maybe. Well, I don't recommend this. Just watch the whole clip, you know. Um, Okay, and in the description text uh, you find the technical data of our test car as well as links to reviews of competitors. Well, Suzuki is naming all the light off-road jeeps uh, Jimny in Japan, but in Europe they started with another name. The first uh, uh, lightweight uh, jeep was introduced in 1968 in Japan. In Europe it took them 10 more years until 1978 and they introduced in Europe the LJ80. A lightweight Jeep just like this with a soft top and all the cool guys. That's how a German ambulance sounds like. And all the cool German guys were driving this kind of car with a top down, you know, cruising down uh, downtown. Uh, two people in front, three or four people in the back jamming and I was just a little boy looking at yeah cool guy however um, in 1981 uh, the LJ80 was replaced by the SJ and in 1998 they decided to rename uh, the lightweight jeeps to Jimny in Europe as well our Jimny uh, is the latest model and the last facelift was done in 2012 a while back, Suzuki invited me to Bremerhaven, a German town uh, at the North the Northern Sea, um, where all the German manufacturers push their new cars that are shipped overseas. And as well, a lot of import uh, companies ship their cars there and they get, you know, spread it all over Germany, especially the Japanese cars that are not built in Europe. Well, quite a few cars get built in Europe by now, but the Jimny is not, as far as I remember, and that's um, they get a special treatment for the market in Germany at least. Uh, I think only for Germany, as uh, they get special treatment uh, for rust prevention, and so the cars who go to Spain or uh, Italy maybe, where it's sunny most of the time while it's rainy here most of the time and cold in winter and all that um, they don't need this rust, uh, rust prevention treatment but our cars have it so if you think about buying a Jimny from another country be aware our German Jimnys they have rust prevention while the other ones I'm not sure you might want to ask at least by the way in Spain uh, a Jimny convertible was built by the uh, company called Santana for a while, but be aware they don't have rust prevention as well. At least I think so. Don't blame me, don't sue me. Don't sue me especially. But this company does not exist anymore, so I'm safe. I confess I always look uh, into the Wikipedia, into Wikipedia whenever I'm uh, doing my moderation, not as the only source of course, uh, but at least on the German page it says, well there's a diesel engine, well you get it with uh, rear wheel drive as well. Well that's not true anymore, at least for the German market. Suzuki only sells or offers this car with one single engine and uh, always with all wheel drive. You only have the choice between uh, manual 5 speed or the automatic transmission with uh, 4 gears and uh, this is even bundled to the middle uh, trim level. And here it is, uh, the heart of our test car and the only engine Suzuki offers, at least in Germany. It's a 1.3 liter four cylinder with 84 horses. It's good for maximum torque of 110 newton meters and you get them at 4100 RPM. Our test car, of course, has all wheel drive and we got the manual five speed in here.
Well, let me give you the basic specs about our test car, the Suzuki Jimny 1.3 liter. Uh, it accelerates from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour or 62 miles per hour in 14.1 seconds. And the top speed is reached at 140 kilometers per hour or 87 miles per hour. The gas tank of the 2016 Suzuki Jimny will take 40 liters or 10.6 US gallons. Suzuki gives a fuel consumption figure of 7.1 liters for every 100 kilometers driven or 33.1 miles per US gallon. Which means that under perfect conditions you can drive up to 560 kilometers or 350 miles without stopping for fuel. CO2 emissions for the 2016 Suzuki Jimny should be 162 grams per kilometer according to Suzuki. The, <clears throat> the Jimny has a length of 3.7 meters or 146 inches with a wheelbase of 2.25 meters or 89 inches. It is 1.71 meters high, so 67 inches, and it is 1.6 meters or 63 inches wide. For the turning circle you need at least 9.8 meters or 32.2 feet of free space. The curb weight comes in at 1135 kilograms or 2502 pounds. The maximum loaded weight is 1420 kilograms or 3131 pounds. As this is an SUV or rather lightweight Jeep, uh, let's have the off-road specs as well. Ground clearance 19 millimeters or 7 inches, 7.5 inches. And the car has an approach angle of 42 degree and an angle of departure of 46 degree, a ramp angle of 31 degree and a weighting depth of 400 millimeters. In Germany our test car would cost around about 17,670 euros. Well, uh, I told you um, they do special treatments for German cars and we have uh, a limited, uh, no, not a limited edition, a special edition. So Suzuki is selling the regular Jimny and the Jimny Ranger, which is uh, most likely for hunters or other people who like to go in the woods. They have some special parts around it. I will point them out. Um, however, they have three different trim levels for the regular one as well as for the Ranger because the Ranger is built out of a regular model. So we got club, comfort and style. Um, our model has uh, the style trim level which you can see as it has uh, fog lamps by factory settings and um, the lights however I don't have to say much regular lights with uh, regular halogen lamps or normal light bulbs all the way through there's nothing more I can say, I just say a little bit so you can see all the lights go on and off. What I like is the air intake on the top. I mean, this car goes 140 kilometers per hour, 87 miles, but it looks like more, doesn't it? All right, the color of our test car is called Quasar Gray Metallic. It's one of four colors you can choose from for the Ranger model. And uh, the Ranger model comes as well with this decals here. Well, actually, it's just a sticker, but I like to say decals. Um, however, the regular Ranger stands on 15 in 15 inch steel wheels and we got 15 inch alloys because we got the style edition. The style edition comes with painted uh, door handles as well as with a silver. Uh, what's it called? I don't know. With a silver part here and tainted windows uh, in the rear. And oh yeah, ground clearance uh, 19 centimeters. Okay, um, the cover of the spare tire is in the same color like the car. That is due to the style trim level. And the uh, hook is, well, I took it off the hook, but the hook is part of the Ranger trim. So uh, both specialties. Uh, besides that, looks like a regular lightweight jeep um, it has a windscreen wiper which is hidden here a little bit i told you tainted windows due to the style edition and uh, in the lights you find of course only regular light bulbs i'm just saying a little bit uh, something so you can see all the lights in action uh, at least for a little bit tralala tralala <coughs> excuse me 
Last but not least, I'm coming back to this, but I like to show it anyway. The door opens sideways here, off the trunk. All right, may I take you inside with me to show you around? First of all, the door is not really tiny. It opens around about 75 degree. Okay, I'm stepping up here. It's a lightweight Jeep, of course. And it's easy to uh, close the door. And while I'm here, I just want to let you know, I don't have much space to the left side. Same like in the uh, Land Rover Defender, for instance. And I learned that this has a reason. It's not due to a lack of space, but rather that when you drive off-road, you can lean out and see the front tire and uh, the, uh, the ground below the front tire. So if you're going off-road in a critical situation, it's always easy to look inside and get a better feeling what's going on there. But since I'm standing on the street, I can roll up the window again. Welcome in the interior of the Suzuki Jimny. And it is a robust car. It's so uh, no fancy stuff. It's just a car for using it in the woods and off-road, I guess. So everything is, of course, hard plastic or I would rather say not easy to destroy. So we, we get close on the floor, but even on the side, it's all hard plastic. And yes, that's it. I, it's just a car. I mean, really, it's a lightweight SUV, uh, not SUV, uh, Jeep. Okay, uh, concerning space, I already told you to the side, not much space. Uh, I can put a fist between my head and the ceiling. I'm 180 centimeters tall, so 5'11". So it's enough space and I think even uh, bigger people can sit in here. And uh, ergonomy, well, you know, we don't have even a display. So every few switches and they're all inside. I like that we have regular rulers here, shock controls. So that's fine with me. Easy. Um, yeah. Not my, oh yeah, right. Um, sitting here with two grown-ups is no problem. It is a compact car, yes. It's not, you know, not a huge SUV, but still you can even drive here uh, longer distances without, you know, feeling tightened up. And that's it. I'm going to start uh, with a normal routine. I think we can adjust the height of the safety belts. I just couldn't figure out how. I have no idea actually, to be honest. But you see the picture. Uh, the safety belts are not really, really long. So, um, yes, you can have a little bit more muscles than I do. <laughs> but um, that's already it. Um, yeah, the seats uh, <coughs> have artificial leather. You can move them uh, manually to the front and to the rear. You can adjust the backrest, but it's only a handle, not a wheel, which I don't like too much. And you can heat them up with one intensity. That's just one button for the seat heating, and it heats both seats. So they have both the seat heating, but you cannot decide. Um, each uh, The passenger cannot say, well, I don't want seat heating if you want it. Well, you have to discuss this peacefully, please. Yes, that's it. <laughs> All right. Um, the steering wheel is uh, coated with leather due to the style uh, trim level. You cannot adjust it. It has no multifunctional um, buttons or whatever. So easy one as well. And um, yeah, let's look in the mirrors. They're squared and they're pretty big for the car. I like them because you see the whole rear pretty good. And um, even the rear mirror, which is not really big and you really have to uh, roll with your head to see the whole rear window, at least you can see the spare tire on the back. So uh, while parking the car with a two mirrors and this one it's pretty easy even without a rear camera i think you can even get one as an option with a different radio yeah i guess so so shoulder view i'm turning around and the b pillar is pretty big indeed it's not like a really big blind spot but 
at least I want to mention it. The other way around, A fine, B still not, not uh, too small, but the C pillar is uh, quite handy. So all together you have a good overview of the sky. It's a small car or compact, well, a rather small, lightweight Jeep. That's what I prefer. So you have a good overview and especially maneuvering the car wherever should be really easy for you. I didn't have problems at all. And I'm always the guy who's complaining, hey, no rear camera, but in this one, fine. You don't need it. It's a lightweight Jeep, yeah. Okay, uh, so let's uh, check out the cockpit together. So I will uh, flash the ignition so you see what's all the lights first. And on the left side, we got the ref meter going up to 8,000 RPM where the red range starts at 6,500 RPM. On the right side, we got the speedometer. The car runs 140. We see digits up to 180. What for? I don't know. But they're there. In the center, we don't have a board computer. Let me make this sure. We have the um, digits for the coolant uh, temperature and for the petrol tank. And here's the trip um, meter and the overall mileage of the car and the time. We have a button down there and we can, with this button, we can switch between two trips. That's it. So no average fuel consumption which leaves me a little bit lost, I have to say. All right, uh, besides that, uh, just to let you see, in the center here, we have the buttons to um, go on four-wheel drive. And once you do this, uh, green light is flashing and I can even go on four-wheel drive low. And then the uh, EPS shuts off and you see this 4L as well. Pushing two-wheel drive again, and you're driving with rear-wheel drive. That's it. And just to show you, that's a regular radio, how we used to uh, see it back in the days when I did my driving license. So we got radio and a CD slot, and that's it. No Bluetooth, no nothing. Well, let me turn the car off. Um, obviously, we don't have an ambient light in here, the warning light indicator is right in the center here, which I like. Easy to see, easy to find, easy to use, that's good. And um, let me honk the horn for you. Sounds like that. And on we go with a compartment check here. In the door panels we have rather slots and than a compartment so my my iphone fits in here but nothing else and we have a rubber band well actually probably to put some maps in there and make sure they don't fly away or fly around that's it nothing in here here we got an ashtray 12 volt outlet but not a cigarette lighter down here little compartments for tickets or whatsoever a real handbrake guys awesome and another little compartment back here, as well as two cup holders, but they don't come with, oops, with spacers. Um, here's another compartment, I put my shades in here, I was waiting for the sun, that never showed up, thank you sun. And we have a gloves compartment down here, so the board material fits in here, but there's nothing else to mention, no light, no nothing. You can lock it up if you want to. Okay, that will be really fast here. We got two sun visors. On the driver's side is a makeup mirror, which is not illuminated, but still we have a clip for holding tickets in here. And we just have one light off, door and on. That's it. Oh yeah, and no handle on the driver's side, but there's one on the passenger side. So if you need it, you can screw it the other way around if you want to. All right, uh, it's only a three-door uh, lightweight Jeep, so I don't have to open the door again. But I want to crawl in the rear. The Ranger, however, comes actually as a two-door, uh, two-seat version because you don't have the seats in the rear, but a, a, a gutter, I guess. What's the word? A mesh thing to prevent everything what's in the trunk to come in the front. So if you want to go with your dog hunting, you can put the dog in the rear. Or if you shot some deer, uh, you can put the dead deer in the rear. 
Awesome. And you put that deer in the rear. Never mind. So I push forward the seat and release the uh, backrest. And then I crawl in the rear here. Which is not too bad actually, not even for me. Oh, by the way, uh, for some reason I didn't get a rear bench. So uh, the, the cushion where I'm sitting on, uh, it was uh, left uh, at Suzuki. So I'm faking it with a child seat. I hope it's okay. You still get an idea, I guess. All right. All right, guys, uh, to show you at least or give you an idea how it is to sit in the rear, I took the child seat off my boy and put, placed it here. It's not the very same like sitting on this uh, uh, bench here, but at least it gives us a glimpse. And I don't want to, you know, make this review without sitting in the rear at least once. So, um, as you can easily see, my, my uh, leg space is really limited. If I sit straight, I put my knees in the rear of the seat of the driver. I'm 180 centimeters tall, so 5'11". The seat, uh, the seat is put in a position that I can drive comfortably, 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 uh, whatever, comfortable, comfortable. And um, But if I put my uh, legs to the side, I could sit here at least for half an hour or an hour without, you know, uh, being too bad mooded. Um, uh, the bench should be in uh, artificial leather as well, just like the front seats. Uh, we got two Isofix, uh, we got Isofix hooks for both seats. The uh, locks of the safety belts are stiff, so kids can buckle up themselves with ease. Safety belt might not really be long enough for a child seat, especially not for a baby's shelf, but you might want to try this. I, w I doubt it a little bit. And uh, besides that, there's not much to say. In the side, we have a cup holder, well, bottle holder, and a big compartment to store some stuff. It's all hard plastic, of course. And uh, that's it. I think here would be regularly handles, you know, for the passengers. But this is for the thing we, we built in here later on. And um, yeah, can't open the window. I don't have much to say here in the rear. That's it. I'm done. At least you get an idea, right? Just like on the rear bench, I have to cheat a little bit because I told you they uh, forgot to give me some, some of the parts. However, I'm starting out uh, with a regular version and then pretending like the Ranger version. Uh, first of all, oh, first of all, the key. Why don't you remind me? What's well, quite a quite quiet uh, audience. The key is pretty simple and uh, Suzuki S on one side and two push buttons for locking and unlocking the car on the other side. So the door, it's not a lid, it's a door open sideways, I told you already. And uh, here's the trunk and I would just pretend it would be the regular one with a little bit of clothes on the floor. So I would say I lift the clothes and all that. But first of all, I will measure the whole thing. Not the whole thing, but at least you have to lift your luggage or goods up 74 centimeters, so 29 inches. And what I think is most important, if you open the door, you have to add additional 115 centimeters to the length or 45 inches. But let's look around. So once again, we're pretending it's a regular Jimny and uh, so we would have some clothes here that I lift up and oh, here I find something, two woods for changing the tires. And on the side, there's a little storage compartment, not only on this side, but as well on this side. And uh, that's pretty much it, to be honest. So we can flip the seats, just lift this up and throw it down. So uh, we don't have a plain surface here, but um, at least we can load in some goods. By the way, those things up here, as well as those are, are the things that I will use to make uh, from the Jimny, uh, Jimny Ranger once again. If I haven't flipped the seats, so this way we have a storage um, here of 113 liters, so four cubic feet. And if I flipped everything, I have uh, a volumina or volume of um, 816 liters, so 29, 29 cubic feet. 
and measuring everything. Uh, oops. So we have a depth here up to this upper part of 28 centimeters to so 11 inches. If I flip it, I have a depth of uh, 90 centimeters, so 35.5 inches. And if I scoot forward the seat to the very most, I almost have, well, yeah, 130 centimeters, so 51 inches. The width between the wheel arches is 95 centimeters, so 37.5 inches. And we have a height in here of uh, 86 centimeters, so 33.5 inches. Okay guys, I just uh, cry, crawled into the car and um, rearranged everything. So what used to be a three regular three-door Jimny is now the Jimny uh, Ranger. Uh, put this uh, thing up there and this um, sheet in here. As you can see down below, I'm uh, letting a little time um, lapse running so uh, when you go in the woods your dog can jump in here or you put the dead deer in there uh, however i just put my suitcase in there so you have a measuring uh, how much space there is all right you can load up to 285 kilograms or 628 pounds inside the chimney of which you can store up to 40 kilograms or 88 pounds on the roof the hook is good for trailers with their own braking system up to 1.3 tons and without a brake uh, for 350 kilograms. All right, guys, this is a little gravel road I can drive on to show you how the comfort is and sort of suspension or how it does on gravel roads. You drive a little bit faster. It's not too bad, I mean, for an lightweight jeep i guess it's okay could be worse and uh, but we have to keep in mind for the whole suspension setup it is a lightweight jeep so it's made to go off-road and uh, not like an suv which is made to stay on the street actually but can go off-road if you want to so this whole suspension setup is rather off-road uh, than streetwise uh, configured which is okay i mean whenever you have a road that is not in such a good shape you feel that you know the car is not too comfortable but um, if the street is fine you, you don't have problems so it's not like you feel every tiny pothole but you feel the big ones <clears throat> suspension wise um, by the way the steering in the middle you have you know a little bit of room for playing around which is normal for uh, SUVs and Jeeps which is okay especially if you go all uh, off-road you want to have a little bit of um, play inside here but I was quite pleased that you can maneuver the car in the street and the city limits downtown pretty well even you have the tires and the um, the power steering is not suppo to, uh, supposing you as much as you might be used from other cars. So the, the tires are not that big even, but the, um, the support by the power steering is not that great either. So, but overall you can handle this car in the streets, uh, in the city even, pretty easily and I, I like this. Uh, going high speed on the autobahn, while high speed here means uh, more than 140 kilometers per hour, 
you should be really tender with the steering wheel because if you do this stuff on the autobahn the car follows your directions so be aware but overall i mean this is just for germans and <laughs> germans don't drive this kind of car on the autobahn too much i guess i don't know but well, whatever okay guys we have the manual five speed here and it is anything but not really precise uh, every once in a while you know you have long shifting ways Every once in a while I was like, where, where is this gear? Come on, come on, where are you, where are you? I want, to. well, that's even the wrong one. So, um, not too precise, but since you're not drag racing with this car or anything else, uh, it's fine, you know, you have all the time that you need to shift. So why don't you take your time and then you will find the right gear with ease, I guess. So no problems concerning that. All right, guys, I'm cruising with 100 kilometers power on the Autobahn in the fifth gear, 3,200 RPM, shifting back 4,000 RPM, same speed, full throttle, 110. All right, all right, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. 120 at 5,000 RPM, come on. 130 at 5,200. And here it comes, 140 at 5,8. All right, we're still in the race, we're still in the race. 150 at 6,000 and here we come. Oh no, no, don't slow me down, don't slow me down. No, no, I have to hit the brake. Okay, believe me, in the fourth gear at 6,500 RPM, you get at 100 miles per hour, so 160 kilometers per hour. And yes, it gets loud, especially everything about, uh, above 5,000 RPM is really loud can't say anything else it is and um, so wind noises they start around about 100 kilometers per hour neat thing they don't get louder you know if you go 100 or 140 the wind don't bother you it's only the engine which gets really loud and especially going well 140 is still okay but uh, everything else is already a little bit annoying. You have to raise your voice at least quite a bit to have a decent uh, conversation here. All right, let's talk about assist systems. Done, we don't have any. They are unknown. Well, I can put the car on all wheel drive, but that's pretty much it. I can tell you uh, we have a power driven windows here. We have an air condition that we can use if we want to. And um, something else I wanted to mention. Oh, I wanted to say that the speakers who come with the car are not bad, really not bad at all. No, no kidding, not lying, no kidding, no nothing. Actually, they're pretty cool, given the fact that this is just a factory car, you know, no special, no badge brand, blah, premium sound system, just the regular speakers. And they can even make the engine shut up at uh, speeds of 130 140 kilometers per hour just turning on the volume really high and it doesn't sound like um shoot uh, you know what i mean it still sounds quite okay especially in the surrounding of this car so i was quite amazed and i like it well i'm sorry i didn't go off-road with the jimny but first of all i don't have any area where i can do this second i don't really know how to do it i'm not an off-road specialist i'm just a car driver but maybe i will find someone someday who explains to me what to do so all the off-road guys uh, get interesting in what i think about off-road driving and uh, maybe this even comes with an area where i can go off-road which is not too easy in Germany because we have so many rules and you are not allowed to do this and that and this and that. Too many, you are not allowed. All right, guys, let me just do a turn here on the street so you get an idea how the steering is. You need some power at least, oops. But overall, that's okay. <laughs> All right, coming to the end of our review here of the Suzuki uh, Jimny Ranger. 
first of all, fuel consumption. Uh, I don't know the exact figure because it does not have a computer, and uh, but I calculated around about uh, 10 liters, a little bit less than 10 liters. But I've been on the autobahn with this baby, and it's not made for the autobahn, to be honest. So uh, you might uh, have less uh, fuel consumption if you drive it rather on country roads or in the city, rather on country roads, or in the woods, in the woods. Um, However, I'm just naming the fuel consumption anyway. I drove around about 600 kilometers, by the way. And uh, driving fun. Well, I didn't go off-road, and I'm not an off-road guy overall, um, so I cannot judge this part of the car. Uh, just driving around city limits, autobahn, and um, on the country roads, driving fun was rather limited. I think it's fun to drive this car, don't get me wrong. It's sort of fun, you know, for two weeks it was fun. But having it as an all, um, well, all the time car, um, then you have to have special needs, I guess, to buy it instead of just, you know, driving around having fun. Uh, driving comfort. Well, it's a uh, lightweight Jeep, so the suspension is rather uh, hard. The seats uh, didn't suit my needs too much. Um, but my back is a little bit critical anyway. But I'm telling you still, not not really my seats, at least uh, when you sit longer than an hour on those seats. And uh, last but not least, uh, usage as a daily driver. As a Ranger version with a huge trunk and just two seats, it might be fine even going shopping with this car or running errands. Uh, with uh, two, the, the other, the rear bench up, you have such a tiny trunk that won't fit your needs for, you know, going shopping or doing anything. You're not even getting a, a, some beer, um, so then you're really limited. I think if you really need four places, you have to think very closely what you're going to do. Drive with a trailer or have some box on the top or whatever, because the trunk is really limited. And the space for grown-ups in the rear is limited as well, I'm just telling you. Well, that's it, I guess. That's it from my review. Um, if you liked it, please give me a thumb up. If you have any questions, put them below in the comments field. I'm trying to answer every once in a while. And uh, if you want to do something good for me, uh, we offer Patreon and Tippy as services where you can send me money down below in the description of the video. And um, that's it. Well, you can share our clip as well on your social networks, the social networks you're using, like Twitter, Facebook, or Google+, Plus, or put them in your personal private playlist on YouTube. That's it, I'm off. I'm just leaving. I'm your host, Mr. Z. Please turn on the next time when I put another review online. So long and goodbye. All right, may I take you, oops.